All right, we are going to approach teamwork like the steel of our buildings, more specifically the structural component of our buildings. So let's take an I-beam as an example. After being milled, it has many possible uses or destinations, right? Although its fate may be a standalone piece of steel somewhere, it's a lot more likely and its potential is best maximized when it's used with other materials. When used effectively with other materials, it can be used for much larger and way more complex systems. So let's think of steel in a large building. The I-beam can be used for structural support and is likely a very important piece to this larger system, but its importance means nothing without other materials and systems it is interacting with. It depends on other factors to be effective, doesn't it? It may need welds or bolts, which then attach to other steel or structural members, which all depend on a stable ground or a system in order for it to be effective and to live out its purpose of being a structural member of a large complex building. While it has individual traits, individual importance and potential to keep a building from collapsing, it can only do this when the other materials are also doing their jobs and holding that I-beam in place. Now let's shift over to teamwork. Teamwork exists to bring people together who are different, but each have their own strengths in order to build something bigger, better, more effectively, or more complex, or more amazing than one individual can do alone. Seems obvious, but if one person could do it alone, then a team wouldn't exist. We wouldn't need a team or we wouldn't use a team. Even if that person is the most intelligent, the, the strongest, the most capable, or the most amazing person on this earth, they would not be able to build, create, or produce the things that we do. The mill worker, the steel supplier, the steel erector, the glazer, those who mix the concrete, those who deliver it, designing a building to include everything an owner wants within the restrictions and requirements of physics and local codes, the engineering, not possible for one individual to do, and we wouldn't want to. Not all of us have the same strengths, which we can get caught up on trying to train, tell, or teach people to have the same strengths because it would seem at that point, if we all had the same strengths, we would all be headed in the same direction and be the most productive. But why would we want to train, tell, or teach everyone to be an I-beam? Again, even though it has a very important role, and it may be the most important role in that building, I, I don't know, but its role is completely useless if it doesn't have the other pieces supporting it, down to the smallest bolt, which in that case is just as important as the I-beam to hold a building together. To be a leader, and to be a good leader, it is imperative and critical to realize and understand this. An I-beam's purpose and potential can increase or decrease based on the structural members it is attached to, as well as the bolts or welds it is attached with. In this case, every piece is important in its own way, but it is how the entire system is put together that maximizes this strength and opportunity potential, making it a part of something amazing. As a leader, we recognize the importance of all of the different pieces, no matter how small, and are able to match strengths and weaknesses to maximize the member's potential to create these amazing things. Otherwise, it would be a standalone I-beam, and its potential and purpose don't have an opportunity to be maximized. A lot of energy can be wasted in trying to make everyone or ourselves into I-beams instead of appreciating and recognizing the strengths of your teammates and how they all contribute to the larger, bigger system. 
So we are not only going to go over how we interact within Teams as an I-beam or a Bolt, um, but also understand this from the view of a leader who steps back and sees the bigger picture to know where that I-beam should be placed based on its strengths and what other members of steel it should be attached to to maximize the potential of those strengths. Ultimately building and leading these amazing teams. First, we need to understand how teams work effectively and also how we interact as a teammate to then better understand how others interact and work together or against each other. So you ready? Let's get started.